The sponsor for this Resident Evil 4 review, I felt only fitting because she was almost at all of the streams I did for Resident Evil 4 Remake. Patreon supporter Ada Dawn. That's right, her name is actually Ada. Ada! That's my Leon Kennedy Resident Evil 2 Ada Falling impression from the original game. Ada! Anyway, Ada, thank you very much for supporting on Patreon and being the sponsor for this video. I appreciate you very much. So let's get on to the review. What can I say about Resident Evil 4 that hasn't already been said, like by countless other people and outlets and uh, just what have you, fans playing the game. Most importantly, what's being said by the fans playing the game. Um, this game is amazing. It exceeded all my expectations and it, it went above and beyond. Were there omissions? Yeah, I've seen a lot of people saying their favorite area was cut or whatever. I felt like the cuts they made in the game and I'm going to cover this first real quick. Uh, the cuts they made in the game, I felt like, really helped the pacing. Uh, I, I saw a lot of people commenting they didn't like the boat area. I enjoyed it because it kind of gave a brief moment of exploration. Like, you can do this, but you don't have to do this kind of thing. Uh, so, it, some of that was necessary. That You had to find the statues, you had to get the key, and all that kind of stuff. But... Uh, some of it wasn't, but I, I really enjoyed them giving me the option of exploring those other areas and taking the boat and all that kind of thing. So, the gondola ride around the area uh, before you fight Mendez in the first game, or the original game, that was omitted. That was all gone, but again, that didn't bother me. I felt like not having to take that gondola around to the underground cave and get all this other stuff, I felt like they scattered that element throughout the game and it improved the pacing like all the stuff that was omitted i felt like was scattered throughout the game and it really helped the pacing i'm glad the salazar statue chase was gone because i always thought that was real just goofy and it kind of took me out of the game the, the another goofy part was the security room lasers i felt like it was cool it was cool in the first game but also it was like i don't know it just didn't feel resident evil it felt like resident evil movie it, and that always kind of felt gross to me. Like the games took something from the movies and incorporated because those movies were always just, I, I never enjoyed them. So the first one was okay, but for the most part, I never enjoyed them. Um, the one omission I wish was still in there is the U3 boss fight uh, with the different sections of the cage falling and everything. I feel like they tried to make the Vertigo fight a bit of that you know with with the tail trying to get you and everything but it, it, it just didn't feel the same the u3 i wish was still in there but again it was a pacing thing and it felt like it was just thrown in there like uh i, I thought they were moving it when i was playing through the game the first time i thought they were moving it to a different place and when salazar dumps you in the underground area i thought that was where you were going to fight the u3 and it wound up going to the vertigo boss fight uh encounter but so all in all i thought the omissions were okay uh it was fine with me it improved the overall pacing of the game the additions look the castle was really kind of the shining example of the additions of remake i felt that was that was really why i felt the castle felt like a classic resident evil mansion in a way with the puzzles and traps and uh, uh the um the, the the areas where you would get bombarded with enemies or whatever out of nowhere so i felt like that was pretty well done ashley's solo sequence in the remake was much less of a headache um it felt good like in the original re4 that was the point i hated ashley because <laughs> trying to get through there and throw the lanterns at the cultists and everything having to dodge them around the tables and she handled kind of clunky and in no port of the game did they ever fix how clunky she handled in those areas uh very slow and she, of course she's not supposed to handle like leon she's not a trained you know uh a trained soldier or whatever for that trained agent but i just 
that part always made me hate that character. I didn't even want to play as her. I didn't even just get Leon off the island. I don't care. You don't, you don't got to take Ashley. Don't worry about it. Leave her. Um, in this game, she was super easy to control. She still felt like she was out of sorts, like she wasn't trained for this and everything. But she, she wasn't a burden. She didn't feel like a burden to handle. And that was great. I love the way they fixed her up. Playing as her in, in Remake made me like that character more because you felt like you were connected to that character, you know? And it, it wasn't a burden, like I said before. Salazar's new boss form was amazing. Was amazing. Like, he was basically just this big amorphous thing in the original and you just had to hit, like, I think weak points on him or whatever while dodging bombardment or whatever but and that that boss fight's actually pretty forgettable in the original um I, i'd actually forgotten about what the ultimate form of him was until i went back and played it a few months ago again getting ready for this but in this one he is awesome and like the way his little tendrils come out and connect to where he's going to be landing or whatever he looked terrifying like he was like one of the best monster designs of remake and you and his platform like it was like uh where he it looked like uh you were it was set for a play or something like that you know I, I just enjoyed i really enjoyed the staging of that area of the boss fight and my most notable addition that I enjoyed the most. For those of you who watched me play it and you saw my reaction, Wesker. We got the first look at what Wesker would look like in a remake. I didn't like his voice that much. You know, people complained about Ada's voice. Ada's voice didn't bother me. She sounded like someone who been there, done that. Like she knew the score. She knew what was going down. She was in control. She wasn't like heightened tension all over the place with her voice or whatever no she was steady she was stoic and i'm sure that's what the directors told that actor how how they told the actor to perform it i didn't like wesker's voice he wasn't he wasn't condescending enough he wasn't you know those are those are things prudent to his character being condescending having a god complex feeling like he's better than everybody that he's talking to directly at any point even william birkin when he would be talking in the brief moments we've seen in like the dark side chronicles and, and, and little aside kind of items he talks to everybody in a condescending manner and i just didn't get that vibe from wesker he was just like almost like just like a businessman or whatever and maybe that's the direction they go with him uh in future remakes but i want to hear the weirdness wesker's weird like he's got a god complex right but he's weird so i want to hear that weirdness in the future but enough of that he's not the focus of this game it is leon ashley ada and Luis. those are the focus of this game uh leon's great they kept they kept the character intact uh i felt like they kept they kept his re4 character intact and they kept the growth where that character in resident evil 2 remake how that he was portrayed where he'd be now so it's a perfect blend of re2 remake leon where he would be in resident evil 4 and keeping resident evil 4 leon's character intact it was brilliantly done like he has, the thing I've always said about Leon is he's a very tragic character. Like you can tell, and I might do another video, a character video on Leon Kennedy at some point, but Leon was always, he's portrayed as this ladies man, kind of, you know, uh, like hunk, you know, uh, not hunk the character, but like, like a, like a, like a heartthrob, you know, he's portrayed that way, but that's not who the character is. The character is a, a fun-loving, joking kind of guy who wasn't able to become that guy because of the tragedies that befell him and took a toll on his psyche and, and on his soul, if you will. Like, even upon coming to Raccoon City, like, they had, like, this whole Welcome Leon banners and stuff. It was like, it's going to be very fun. And he is a very... In Resident Evil 2, the original game, 
you got this, but in Resident Evil 2 Remake, one of the things I loved about that game was how they nailed his character. Like, he was a good, like, just from a blue collar kind of family, like a good dude who you could tell his nature was to subvert the like, tension and stuff with joking. Like, even in the dark moments of Resident Evil 2 he's by himself, he, he would crack like a small, quiet joke to himself. That's who he is, and that's who he is in Resident Evil 4 Remake as well. But he's harder. Like, he didn't... Like, if Raccoon City hadn't happened, he'd be like a guy cracking jokes and, like, maybe pulling pranks on you or something like that. That That's who he is naturally. Probably a bit of a nerd. I mean, he's probably a bit of a nerd, too. But because of the things that happened to him, that comes out. That leaks out every now and then. But he's hard. You know, he, he's become a dark character. But some of those little aspects of him still come out. And I thought it was brilliant the way they portrayed him in Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now, Ashley Graham in uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake was not as much of a pain to deal with. I actually liked Ashley in Remake. I thought she was a, uh, a well-fleshed-out character. She wasn't just an escort mission. She was a well-fleshed-out character who you cared about what happened to her. Like, her moments of pain, her moments of terror. Like when she would become taken over and she would run off upset. And then the scene when you first get to Salazar's castle when Leon and Ashley are having that moment on the couch and they're talking about I felt sympathy for that character. I really did. It was a great scene. I, I love the way they pulled that off. It was masterful. Now, Ada's Ada. There's, there's not a whole lot to go over there with Ada. I do like that little twist at the end with her when, you know, Wesker's like, oh, you know, Tons of people are going to die, you know, but, you know, get me the ember or whatever. And then she pulls the gun on the helicopter pilot. She's like, we're going a different way. I liked what they did there. It showed that she's not just in it for a big payday or whatever. You know, she actually has a bit of a moral compass. You know, I'm not going to let all these people die. We're, we're going to try something else. Of course, we know because of Resident Evil 6, we know that that doesn't work out the way she would want it to. But anyway... Now let's get to the real star of Resident Evil 4 Remake, Luis Serra. What they did with Luis in this game was masterful. They took an already fan favorite character in Luis and they made him a legendary Resident Evil Pantheon character. This character after this game is forever in the annals of Resident Evil lore. Like He is like one of the best and super influential because what I wanted to talk about real quick is I break finish out the review for the game is they added so much to Luis they added so much to the character like he was a part like you find out through the little files and stuff you find and a lot of times when you're playing a Resident Evil game you can thumb through the files and it's like it's okay 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 that's where this came from okay that's how this thing was made or whatever but a lot of times it's not about a character the files in this game that you find are telling the story of Luis's life. Like, <clears throat> not until I got to the lab did I figure out that the house where you find the picture of the old man and the boy, that that is Luis and his grandpa. And Luis's grandpa is the one that was bitten by the dog and was the first uh, victim of Las Plagas, you know, and... That house is most likely the house that burned down that Luis grew up in. Where you find Luis, you know, tied up in the basement and everything. And then you go back there and you find that ring and that, uh, you find that treasure and you find the note about uh, his grandpa's entry and everything. And the fact that Chief Mendez was the one who captured Luis. And Chief Mendez was the one to uh, that the grandpa had asked to make sure that everything was okay and he knew what to do you know watch over the boy that kind of thing you know it was brilliant and it wasn't any dialogue in the game or anything like that but Luis knew his way around the village he he was from there this is the village he was from and he came back there when he was escaping all the investigate or he left Umbrella before all the investigation stuff happened and he was a part of the European division of Umbrella that developed Nemesis he was directly responsible for the events of Resident Evil 3. And in a way, the events of Resident Evil 2, because 3 takes place before and at the same time as 2. So 
Luis Serra, the way they wrote this, has a direct hand in Raccoon City, the fate of Jill Valentine, and all the stars members, uh, Leon, all the characters from 2, the characters from 3, and what happens in 4. The way they wrote it, and it's masterful writing, just slip that in there, add into the lore, add into the background of the world. That was the star of the show for me, Luis Serra, and then the way they took him out with Jack Krauser. I called that one, I think a lot of people called that one too. Um, I was like, when, when it was shown that he was in the cart ride part of Resident Evil 4 Remake, I was like, oh, he's going to last longer, but I bet Jack, I bet Jack Krauser kills him. I bet Krauser kills him. So, and that's kind of the way it uh, wound out. But Luis was such an amazing character. He really made... Uh, a lot of the scenes in Resident Evil 4 Remake amazing. Like, he, he made the game funner. He added that element of fun to it. And I really hated seeing him go. I really did. I really hated seeing him go because at the, at the end of the day, he was a genuinely <clears throat> tortured person who was trying to do the right thing in the end. And uh, he did by helping Leon and Ashley get the Lust Plagueis out of their system. Anyway... So let's talk real quick about, you know, the game, how fun it was, all that kind of stuff. Look, I'm still replaying through it. Like, I'm on my, uh, I'm at the end of my second playthrough, and it's just as fun, if not more fun, the second time, So I'm just running and gunning, you know? But then picking up all this stuff, knowing the things that are going to happen, looking for all the little files now to see if there's anything I missed. Um, I think it's just an amazing experience. The way you can upgrade your weapons in this game. Uh, I love the Merchant. Um, I think it's a, it's a nice modern take on that merchant. He had that old Cockney accent in the original game, and now he's more it's more subdued, but it's still really good. You know, I, I'm really enjoying what Capcom's doing with these remakes, modernizing the classics. And well, two and four, three was very mid. Uh, there was a lot of missed opportunities with three, but all in all, Resident Evil Four Remake was amazing. It is. Uh, it took an already one of the greatest games of all time, took one of the greatest games of all time and made it better. They made it better. It was, uh, it was a master stroke for them. Uh, congratulations to Capcom and all the success of the game. Uh, it's this deserving of all of its accolades and all the sales and all the money it's making and all that kind of stuff. I, I have to say, I have to, I have to be honest. Resident Evil 4 Remake is a masterpiece. That is my official grade for this game. It is a masterpiece. Um, a game that you can finish and not wait to start again, like which has been countless people out there, like they finished the game and they couldn't wait to start it again, which was exactly what I did. Um, I finished the game and the next night I started it again. You know, I, I went through and uh, did my blast away run, you know. It's a masterpiece in every in every sense of the word, it, and it's not an over exaggeration. People overuse that word a lot these days, but that that game is absolutely a masterpiece. The only game I think coming out this year that will be able to dethrone this game will be Final Fantasy 16. And I don't think anything else that I've seen on the docket, on the radar, whatever, has a has a chance of beating this out for Goaty. I just don't. So anyway, uh, to keep it there. That is my review of Resident Evil 4 Remake. The character I focused a lot on the characters and the changes from the original game, but there were so many other aspects of this game that were fantastic. The overarching story was good. Um, Sadler was good, the, the main villain, but I felt like the real villain of this game is the surroundings itself. Is just the it's just the whole area that feels like the villain. Sadler is steam spearheading everything, but he never feel to me he never feels like the main villain. He's the guy you gotta take out, but um, it, everything felt like the main villain. If that makes sense, like everything, like whatever was taking your attention at that moment was the main villain. Whether it's running from Vertigo or uh, you know the the lake monster. Or I forget what it's called, forgive me. Um, or, or Salazar in the castle, you know, manipulating every movement. Uh, and then Jack Krauser, of course, and then ultimately leading to Sad Osmond Sadler. Uh, I just felt like it was masterfully done. Uh, it, it never felt, it never like, felt like it was overstaying its welcome. It never felt like 
oh, I gotta do this again. No, it never felt like that. And there were parts of RE4, the original, where I felt like, oh man, I gotta do this again. Oh, this, this the sliding puzzle with Ashley, oh my God. You know, ne I never felt like that at any point in this game. So, anyway, Masterpiece, good job, Capcom. I can't wait for that Code Veronica remake. Wink, wink. Um, until then, hope you all enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments what you all thought about Resident Evil 4 Remake and uh, whether how, how you grade this game, you know? I know there's going to be a lot of varying opinions, but my opinion, this is a masterpiece. This is one of the best games we've gotten in a long, long time. Doesn't overstay its welcome, stays fun, stays, it's even more fun the second time around. I can't wait for the third time. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. Be good to each other. Keep rocking. I will see you all in the next video. Take care. I want to say a quick thank you to my YouTube and Patreon members and supporters. If you would like to support the future creation of content on this channel, get some few extra perks and some art sent to your door every month, consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member. Details and links are in the video description.